Pastor Richard asked me to start with the first title, Relaying Apostolic Foundation. Relaying Apostolic Foundation. Not bringing new apostolic foundation, relaying it. In other words, if there's anything that we have lost in our churches, we need to come together to relay apostolic foundations. We are here together, and I know that we are part of the fivefold ministry. Everyone is part of the fivefold ministry, but we not, are not all apostles. We are not all prophets, we, but we are pastors. So Jesus said that his church that he built has been building upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. But then the most important part comes Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. So I want to put that in the first, in the beginning. Jesus Christ is the chief cornerstone, and we want to build our churches upon that cornerstone, upon the Lord Jesus Christ. But secondly, the foundations of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry. Now you say to me, Pastor Jan, we've got a wonderful, nice little church, and we can't have all five ministries that God has created because he said that he gives the fivefold ministry, the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, and the teachers for the equipping of the saints. But we cannot have all five in our church. That's understandable. We also, in this church, we haven't got the fivefold ministry together, but we can be connected are you hearing what I'm saying? We can all be connected to the apostolic ministry and the prophetic ministry. Many of us are connected to Dr. Jonathan David in Malaysia as an apostle and a prophet, which we give God glory for, and we thank God for what we are hearing, because doctrines foundations are coming to our churches, and we can build. But remember one thing very carefully. Pastors are builders. Pastors are not foundation layers. Have you got it? Whatever foundation we as pastors try to lay, and we build on that which is not according to the Word of God, it will collapse. It cannot stand. So we are together here to encourage one another and to hear from 15 different pastors that are in this conference because every pastor has something that the others don't have. I'm strong in one part, and weaker in another part. You are stronger in another part. And so we can help one another as we come together and strengthen one another. And as we are connected to the apostles, we can bring in apostles' foundation. Now, Jesus Christ started his ministry with 12 disciples. And when he died on the cross of Calvary, and he, was ro he raised from the dead and went into glory, those 12 pastors, one he lost. Those disciples became apostles. And those apostles went around to lay apostolic foundations. And then they were calling pastors to pastors the churches. So pastors are not foundation layers. And that means there is not only one apostle, there are more apostles in the world. 
So we have people from different networks, and they have their apostles. And it's wonderful that we can gather together and we can hear also from other apostles. Because together we want to build the church according to the will of God. So that's why I feel it's very important that we are here together. And if I go to Paul, Paul was a, an apostle that was really going out to build the churches. Let us go first of all to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And we go to verse 5. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 5. It says, who then is Paul? Well, he's an apostle. But really, who is he? Who is Apollos? Well, Apollos is a pastor. But that's not important. They ministers through whom you believed as the Lord gave to each of, of them. So Paul came and he laid apostolic foundations. Apollos, Apollos was a pastor and he had to build upon it. So he said, I planted, that is the apostle. Apollos watered, that's the pastor. But God gives the increase. And what is the most important? The Lord God Almighty that gives the increase. So that neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one. So, we are one together with the fivefold ministry to build the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor, because everyone has been called into your strength. Every one of you have strength. Every one of you have been called in a specific direction. And you will receive reward for your labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation. This is what Paul is saying. But another builds on it, and we are building upon the foundation of the apostles. He says, but let each one take heed how he builds upon it. So we thank God for apostles. Even today, we thank God for prophets today. And we've got to acknowledge them that foundation comes by them. I think that we are more than 20 years going to Malaysia to Dr. Jonathan David, and we have heard a lot of things, and we can bring it into our churches because I'm not an apostle, I'm a builder. That means I'm a pastor to build up the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, for no other foundation can anyone lay. I cannot lay another foundation. Think of it. If you are building and you are on a foundation and then you go off from that foundation, God is saying, I will send the storms and the rain. Why will God send the storms and rain? Because if you built a wonderful building, perfect if you look at it, but if it's not on the foundation, it will collapse. And it must collapse. Because we have to stay on the foundation of the apostles and the prophet. And our constitution is the word of God. So we have wonderful things in the word of God that helps us, but we also have apostles and prophets. I remember that time that Dr. Bill Hammond from America was here with us, and he spoke to us about the reformations. 
He said the first Reformation started at the time when Jesus ascended up into the heavens and the first apostles started with the churches. And that went on, laying the foundation, apostolic foundations and everything, but then after a couple of hundred years, it went down into the dark ages. And then about 500 years ago, the second Reformation started with Martin Luther, and they had to rebuild a lot of the doctrine in the Word of God, and the one came after the other. And the problem is that many people in the church are listening, and they grab what is being saying, and they say, this is wonderful, we want to follow, but then others, I want the old thing, and there's a split in the church, and this has happened for the last 500 years. And then he tell, told us that the doctors of Christ, according to Hebrews chapter 6, is done with in 2008. All the doctrines have been restored. Now the third reformation has already started. And you want to ask, what is the third reformation? The third reformation is his kingdom. Let your kingdom come. This is what Jesus preached. This is what Jesus emphasized, the kingdom of God. But we cannot have the kingdom of God before the doctrines of God have been restored in, in Hebrews chapter 6, which is repentance, baptism, the laying on of hands, uh, help me, eternal judgment, resurrection, resurrection of the dead, and laying on of hands. That's the sixth doctrine that has to be restored before we can continue into the third re uh, reformation to bring down to this earth the kingdom of God. So he says, now if anyone builds on this foundation, gold with silver, precious stones with wood, with hay, and straw. Doesn't matter what you use. It doesn't matter is what you build is gold and silver and wonderful and people look at it, it's beautiful. If it's not on the foundation, it will vanish away. That's why Paul said, watch to all the pastors, how you build upon his foundation. So when I talk about relaying the found apostolic foundation, we are not asking you to lay new foundations. It's relaying that means foundations that have been lost. We need to bring it back into order. So how will we do that? Let me take you to Paul and Apollos, an apostle and a pastor. So let me take you to, to uh, Acts chapter 18, and in verse 24, Acts chapter 18 and verse 24, it says, now a certain Jew named Apollos, that's a pastor, born at Alexandria, an eloquent man, a good man, mighty in the scripture, came to Ephesus. So when he came to Ephesus, mighty in scripture, he knew everything from the scripture at a certain stage. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately, accurately the things of the Lord. But now listen to the next verse. Though he knew only the baptism of John. In other words, he was fervent in the spirit, had great knowledge of the word of God, was speaking from his heart, did the right thing, built the right thing, but 
he only went up as far as the baptism of John. Baptism of John is a baptism of repentance. So, in verse 26, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. And when Aquila and Priscilla heard him, Aquila and Priscilla is Paul's apostolic companions. They took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. I believe if we are here together as pastors, that everyone can give us some input in the things that we should bring into our churches like Apollos could not bring it in Ephesus. Now he is in Corinth and, and he hears is upgraded by Aquila and Priscilla. And in verse 19, uh, chapter 19 and verse 1, and it happened while Apollos, that's the pastor that started the church in Ephesus, was at Corinth, so he was not in Ephesus now, that Paul having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus and finding some disciples. This was some of the disciples of Apollos. So when he came in Ephesus and he found the disciples, he started to talk to them, and look what he said in verse 2. He asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they were amazed. They say, what? We don't have heard of it. Nobody has told us about that. What is it? We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. So then Paul, that is an apostle that is relaying foundations, comes and asks them a question. He says, then what, in what baptism were you baptized? says, baptism? Yeah, we are baptized. We are baptized in the baptism of John. Oh, the baptism of John was before Jesus died on the cross of Calvary. The baptism of John was to call the people to repentance. Now, when Jesus died and he brought the sacrifice to the Father... Suddenly, everything changed, and now we need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, he said, indeed, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, in verse 4, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him. So, John already prepared those people that this baptism is for a specific time until Jesus Christ comes. And when Jesus Christ comes, things will be different. So, John already said it, but these people were not upgraded. So, when they heard it, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what does this mean? The first people got baptized unto repentance. Now suddenly they come and we want to be baptized according to the new thing because the baptism of John is obsolete. It's a new thing. So the foundation is being relayed. It says, now you've got to be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the, what is the name of the Father? The name of the Father is Lord. What is the name of the Son? Jesus. What is the name of the Holy Spirit? The Anointed One. The Christ, the Anointed One. So what the early disciples did in the book, in the, in the book after the book of Acts, they were taking the people and they were baptizing them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ which is in the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, because we have a triune God and we serve a triune God. So, people at that time were upgraded. 
And in the last 500 years since Martin Luther, every church, every time was upgraded. But now we're living in the time of the kingdom of God. And we need the Holy Spirit. And we need the ministry of the apostles and the prophets because Jesus said, the foundation is laid on the apostles and the prophets prophets and Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone. So they, when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke with tongues and they prophesied. So what really happened is that they explained to him the way of God more accurately. And let me tell you something, one of the functions of the apostles is to deal with old foundations that was laid earlier by someone else. In this case, it was by Apollos. It was Apollos gifting and anointing, but the apostle need to introduce a new dimension of change in the work of Ephesus. And I want to say the same thing, that the work of the apostle is needed in our churches today to upgrade us. Because remember, Jesus said he's coming back for a church without spot and wrinkle. So we will have to get our churches in that realm. I'm not there yet. I don't know if anybody else is already perfect, but we'll have to strive to do the right thing. So Paul, a new man with apostolic anointing, was bringing input for man foundation, for new foundation laying. This apostolic input will enlarge the spiritual capacity and the spirit anointing over the work. The truth that was taught by the Apollos were not the present truth. It was truth that was truth in his days. So we can learn a lot in the past, but we have to be upgraded all the time. The truth that was taught by Apollos was not New Tes Testament or present day truth. He taught the church what he had learned. And you and I, we are teaching our church people what we know, what we have learned. So in relaying foundations, the senior pastor has to deal with the area of truth. Okay? and it can cause trouble. <laughs> but what is God saying presently? What can bring light on what we have heard before? And then I want to take that little portion again that I preached to you. Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit? So immediately when you are speaking to your people and saying, have you heard about this? Have you heard about this? then when they say, I've never heard about it, then you can upgrade those people. And that's why it's so great to be together with pastors. Because if we're together with pastors and now we can listen to 15 different pastors speaking and we can learn from each and every one of us. So they did what Paul requested. They got baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, and they got filled with the Holy Spirit. You know, we, and I, I know that some of you maybe had a lot of experiences in your youth. I'm not so young anymore. I'm only 79, and I'm serving the Lord from the beginning. My parents were strict. We had to go to church, but we were in a church that did not believe in baptism by immersion and when my father got baptized by immersion he was kicked out then we went to another church that 
that preaches baptism. And I became the youth leader as a young man before I met my wife, and we are only married now 54 years before I even met her. And as a youth leader, God came into the youth and baptized us with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. And the leadership said, no, 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 that's not for now. It is for 2,000 years ago, and we were asked to leave the whole youth instead of accepting what God is doing. So this is difficult, but we'll have to come to our people, and that is what Paul did. He was dealing with the old foundation and establishing new. I want every one of us to be open in our hearts for what God is downloading, down loading, yeah, that's it, from heaven. And we can help one another. So the senior pastor needs to relay foundations for greater manifestation of God life in his local church for a fresh move of God and church growth. And that will help them to be updated what God is saying presently to go higher in their experiences. That's why it's so good to come together. And I'm so, I was looking forward to this gathering together, coming together, because this is the time that we can help one another, encourage one another, pray for one another. And I'm so glad that God gave us the gift of speaking in tongues. And even this morning when we were singing and worshiping God, thank you for participating in singing in tongues. That's wonderful. Uh, uh, we want even more of that. Here in Gauteng, we're coming together every Tuesday, some pastors from the locally here, and we take at least 20 minutes to pray in tongues together. And let me tell you something, it releases an atmosphere and it helps us to get established in the things of God. So we can receive from different apostles or different networks. There's not only one apostle that has everything. It's more and more. Dr. Bill Hammond said to us there will be many apostles, but at the end of days, he reckons there might be only 12 apostles, as it was in the beginning. And these 12 apostles had different ministry gifts. And he said we need them all in the ministry. So God is still going to do wonderful things. Remember, it is not, we are not yet together to join networks. We are not going into the old thing to establish certain things, another church organization, another network or anything. No. Our emphasis in this conference is the cornerstone, Jesus Christ. So the senior pastor had, and his leadership must allow new truth to be restored into the people's heart. We must be taught to receive the updates from progressive revelation and new things God is unfolding even today. And the only way that we can find out more and more is as we are gathered together and we hear from 15 different pastors and we will pick up something from each and every one. You believe that? Amen. We must also be careful not to classify and categorize truth. And get, uh, uh, categorize truth under different movements. No. Truth should be taught as truth for the whole body. Remember, I spoke about Martin Luther, and the truth that was restored by Martin Luther is not Lutheran truth. It's not Lutheran truth. It's God's truth. It belongs to God. Our network, if we thank God for truth, but it's not our network's truth. 
It is God's truth. And God is the one that needs to restore truth. So our forefathers of every movement fought to restore truth at the expense of their own lives and reputation when God restored this truth to them. They were given the left foot of fellowship like we had in our lives from their denomination and colleagues in the ministry. But God did not kick us out. <laughs> Those who believe these voices in the wilderness and move on to have they have seen a new day in the Lord Jesus Christ. I know much more than I knew 50 years ago because I've been around apostles and I've learned. So when the pastor is relaying foundation and address to his people, the people must be willing to re and be receptive to follow new truth. They must have faith so that they can come into tune with the present move of the Holy Spirit. When the church maintain its original spirit roots, but keep on doing what everybody else is doing, then the nature of the church isn't changed. It is not where you came from, but it's where you're going today that gives you your position in authority and ministry grace. It's where we are going. Otherwise, it's only cosmetic surgery. God wants us to become the planting of the Lord. Do you believe that? Yes. And God wants us to draw our present life from what God is doing. In other words, if we are planted in the soil that God has planted us in, we can draw from that soil. Our spiritual roots should be in what God is saying and doing today. Spiritual roots tie us down to the ground that we are growing in. So without dealing with spiritual roots, pastors cannot relay apostolic foundations. Not in the local church for a fresh move of God. We'll have to look at what God says in his word. And we are not obligated to maintain and preserve the distinctives of the past move of God, but we have to stay on God's purposes for today's move and pursue to catch a fresh wave of God's glory in his present generation. He is the life source of every revival. He is the answer. So in relaying apostolic foundation, and the new revelations of the ways of working of the Holy Spirit are unfolded for breakthroughs. When proper apostolic foundation are laid in the church, spiritual atmosphere and position will change and help the church to become apostolic in nature and in anointing. Let me tell you something. If we stand together, especially during the worship service, and we worship God with spirit and truth, you will, man, you will sense the atmosphere will change. That's what needs to happen in our churches. We've sensed it, and when the atmosphere is changed, what we have discovered in our church, people from the street are coming in. They're hungry. They give their lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. They say we want to be baptized in the cold winter. We had to baptize people because they said we want to be baptized. They are so hungry. Atmosphere must be right. It's not my preaching. It's the atmosphere. These apostolic doctrines are based upon the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ before his crucifixion and, he, and, and in his 40 days after he rose from the dead, after his resurrection, where he preached specifically about the kingdom of God. And we see the Lord Jesus Christ spent a lot of time with his 12 disciples, although he lost one. He had 11 that took it through. And I believe God will have his apostles today all over the world. 
So these 40 days brought direct revelation into the spirit of the apostles concerning the kingdom of God and the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was no longer the nation of Israel which was centralized of the outreach there at that time, but the church of the kingdom of God. Apostles are not information communicators. It's not just to bring you information. They are not just there to pass on knowledge, but they are called to bring the church forth as the bride of Christ without spot and wrinkle. Now, we cannot do this as pastors because we are builders. But we must make sure that we build upon the right foundation. Apostolic foundations and that is why Jesus said, apostles and prophets lay the foundation, and he himself is the chief cornerstone. And we must make sure that we build 100% correctly on those foundations. Then we will have God's anointing coming. 